Hello, I'm Scotty and I'm Precision Farming Specialist for John Bob Farm Equipment and today we're going to go through startup on the FM750 display and uh, we'll go through through the quick start wizard, your implement measurements and your ease pilot setup. So this is the starting screen when you first start up your FM750. This is the display setup wizard and uh, it just gives you an initial greeting at start. Hit your green arrow and it asks you what preferred units of measurement you'd like. Most of us use imperial or US or in inches and feet. And then it gives you an option to choose what auto steer type you're using, whether you use an ease steer, your manual steering just with the light bar, your ease pilot or autopilot. And then you can choose which one you're using. And if you don't know, that's when you'd phone into your dealership. Ask your precision farming specialist and he'll let you know what you're using. And then it just asks you if you'd like to see this display startup wizard again at the start of each menu. If you just want those, those settings left, then you would hit no. And then you won't see that screen every time you start up the 750. If you'd like to see that, because you may be changing some things, hit yes. And then go through there. And then you'll immediately come to this main screen. This is your operation screen and this is where you can enter in all your other settings and stuff so to first start up you'd be going into your settings button now most of your calibrations and all that will have been done when it was first installed whether by us at the dealership or by you if you had installed it yourself you would have done your calibration but it is good to recalibrate everything at the start of every season then you know it's accurate so if you're having any questions about recalibrating now you can go into your auto steer, your ease pilot setup, and then there'd be a calibration wizard, and that's where you'd go. And it just gives you a brief description of all the different uh, calibrations you'll be going through. And your vehicle measurements, which is an important one. So you pick your type. So most will be using articulate four-wheel drive, but if you're not using a uh, front-wheel assist, you'd choose that or if you have one in a combine, you know, so on and so forth, you'd put it in there. So we'll go with articulated four-wheel drive because that's what most people are using for seating. And then it'll ask you for your wheelbase. Now, most of this you'll be able to find in your owner's manual, most of the measurements and that. But if you don't have your owner's manual or you, you know, you can't find that, that's when you pull out your tape measure and you'll be measuring from the middle of each the front and back wheel with the articulation straight, as straight as possible. And you'll be measuring and writing that measurement down and punching it in here. Then there's your antenna height. Oops, sorry, I'll go back here one, two. Uh, another good, if you're having any questions about your wheelbase measurement, there is the check or the question mark at the top and it gives you all your information on what that is. On everything I just told you it's right in there if you need to read it just so you get it straight with yourself then it's in there and you can read through it so the next one is antenna height so then that's from the bottom of the ground to where the antenna is the top of the antenna and it tells you that up in this question mark here for the help and uh, it just it explains the antenna height is the distance between the ground and the top of the GPS antenna so that's that's an important one to get right as well and your antenna to axle offset, so that's where your front drive wheel is on an articulated four-wheel drive to where the antenna sits. So on most, it'll be a certain number behind the front wheel. So it gives you a brief description in your help, too, on uh, what all those are. So for front wheel assist, it's from the rear axle, so then you would be putting it that the antenna is in front of the rear axle. I'm putting in a measurement there. If you're doing a four-wheel drive, it's the front axle. So then typically your antenna would be behind. And that's where you would choose in here, your forward or behind. So for four-wheel drives, it's the antenna is always behind the front axle. Generally speaking, it's behind. Some guys will put it at the front of the, the hood and then you would have it as a forward measurement. But it's gotta be taken from the middle of the front tire middle of the axle and then back um, lots of times if you're not wanting to be climbing up and down 
what I will generally do is take a measurement from the middle of the front axle and then there's a spot on the rim of the tire on the inside rim that lines up identically with where the antenna is and you can take that measurement punch it in, and it'll be fairly close as close as it needs to be uh, your roll calibration that's important for uh, roll compensation so you look at where your IMD 600 is situated in the cab and you look at where the connector is and that's where you where you're going to to choose which direction it's facing whether it's label up connector back label up connector front you know just you have numerous options there and that's basically all you have to do to enter in a calibration for that so is just look at where it's situated because it should be square with everything in the cab and then just choose the option that fits with for you and uh, click it go over and it'll ask you would you like to calibrate the roll sensor we will go yes and for these uh, calibrations what I generally do is I will come to the front and the, the back wheel and the front wheel and I will dig in the ground with my foot a line going back and a line side to side right along the edge of the tire on each one and then that no I, that shows me where I'm supposed to be when I go and turn around because for these to be accurate you need to do it in a stationary position with those marks drive the vehicle around turn it around and then have the opposite wheels lined up with those marks you made in the dirt and that's the only way you'll get an absolutely accurate uh, calibration. So it's calibrating stationary right now after you've made the marks in the ground. So then this is where you, be where you turn around and face the opposite direction lining up as, as close as you can get with the center of the axle lining up with this line and your tires right alongside that uh, horizontal line so that you know you're basically exactly where you left off. Um, it's good to be as accurate as possible, but if you're maybe up to six inches off, it's that's pretty close. You don't have to be bang on, but it's better to be as clo closer rather than further away. So, uh, so tell me now, because I didn't turn around, I, it knows that the GPS antenna is facing the same direction as, as when you started. So it's asking me to turn the view around for an accurate calibration, but you can bypass that and just hit it and it'll take another calibration and from the same position, but it won't be accurate. And I have to do that for this purpose because we're using uh, our display model. There, it gives you your, your value, your roll offset value. If you want it, you can write that down, but you'll always be able to find it in this 750 if you ever need to know for uh, what your roll calibration is at in case you're asked. Uh, and that's all done. This you'll be getting into right angle per turn and left angle per turn calibration. So it just it goes through it all here as to what you need to do to perform that. Um, it's best to be. Uh, it's saying here for top is calibration run between two to four at normal operating RPM. Uh, so normal operating RPM will be full RPM always. So two to four miles per hour at full RPM. Um, then there, it's got its max value and then it doesn't, you know, you might not always run at full RPM, but it, it's instead of it, you calibrating at a lower RPM and then later on in the field going to higher RPM and it not being calibrated for that value. Now it's got its maximum value that it'll ever be at and it'll be right bang on. But you can also go into the help and it'll give you a more detailed description of what your right angle per turn is doing and how to do it. And then we'll go through that, left angle per turn. Um, for these, uh, you will need to, before starting these, you would need to go back actually and set a guidance line and then go with that guidance line. And then you can, so you'd be going back to your main screen here, to your field create a new field and we'll go with A plus and you just pick a heading with A plus and we'll go with uh, zero 
and then you set your A and it should shoot a straight line for you and then you can go back into your settings you go So there, now we're back to right angle per turn calibration. And then you can, as you start moving to your full RPM, your two to four miles per hour, you can hit your engage button and it'll engage and calibrate that. It'll turn the vehicle slowly, like it'll start turning your uh, ease pilot, or your ease steer, or your autopilot. Um, it'll turn it for you. Um, automatically just gets it that minimum, the minimum amount it needs to turn that, the the motor on the steering. So that's calibration complete. So that concludes uh, basic setup and uh, calibration for the FM750 with an Ease Pilot. Uh, just a few more things and that's uh, we have precision farming support line uh, which the number for that is 866-639-4563 and with that you have a subscription and a registration that we would have to fill out for you if you'd like that but it's 24 hours a day 365 days a year um, I think it's about 200 bucks uh, annual subscription fee and uh, that gets you like I said 365 day a year 24 7 uh, support and they handle some of the less technical aspects so just basic setup stuff screen you know display issues that maybe don't require a service call that they can help you through. And that concludes our first uh, video for YouTube. Um, we'll be coming out with more. Um, stay tuned.